Look, there's some watercolours and they're so, so pretty. Well, this is a new watercolour tin that I got from an Artful box. And yeah, I've never had an Artful box before and I decided to treat myself to the watercolour one. It's not the newest box, so I haven't done an unboxing or anything because other people will have done that. But this box comes with the tin, which is a beautiful teal colour. And it's also got all of these beautiful, lovely, fancy brushes. Um, which I'm very pleased about because I always need brushes and I need good ones. I need nice ones, not the, the scrunchy ones that I have. And I also have this lovely pad of watercolour paper. So I decided to have a go at drawing a kind of Mr Mole character and I'll say right here that watercolour is not something that I have done a lot of. So I always feel like I'm not too good at it um, because I don't know I second guess myself uh, but that's mainly because I just haven't done it enough and as with anything if you haven't done it very much then you can't expect to be brilliant at it so if I just practice my thoughts are that I will improve <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the plan so that's why I got myself this box, um, because I wanted to give myself that little push to spend some actual time playing with watercolour, because I love seeing people's results that they get with watercolour. And I want some of that painty goodness, you know? <laughs> I want to enjoy it too. Now, as you watch this video, I'm sure if you're into watercolour, or even if you're not, you, you will see all of the mistakes that I make as I go through. I pick very strange colours at times. I don't let it necessarily dry as much as it should at times. At one point, I give him a bright red nose for absolutely no reason, and I have to dab that off because, golly, it was bright. There was a point where I thought, should I, should I share this on YouTube? Is it something that people want to see? Because there's so many amazing things to watch out there. Why does anybody need to see this little attempt that I've made? Which is, I know it's not perfect. But then you start getting into the area of um, where is the value in things? And this... I think comes down as well to the crux of why folks don't necessarily share their art and I think it's a very sad thing. I know that when I first started um, being creative in all kinds of ways I never shared it. I was scared um, that people would judge it um, and or people I was scared actually as well that people would assume that I thought that I was better than I was. Um, I, I knew that I was not perfect. I knew that I didn't have the skills yet. And I thought if I put something out there, people will think that I'm saying, look at me, look at how great this is, you know. Um, and I, I thought that they would judge me for that as well. But what I found was when I actually did start to get brave enough to just share a little bit of what I was doing, I found that I started to let go of the worry of what other people would think. And how strange is that, that you actually have to do the thing in order to lose the fear of the thing. As with everything, the, the unknown of anything is the thing which is the scariest, isn't it? Because if you're anything like me, you build up scenarios of what might be and what might happen in your head so very densely that it's very difficult to then take the plunge and assume that maybe there could be a different outcome from what you have um, concocted in your brain. Uh, and I suppose I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here, but yeah, I, th I think as soon as I started to let go of that and I started sharing not for anybody else, but purely for me uh, to have a kind of accountability to myself to say, look, 
just do it it doesn't matter it doesn't matter that it's not perfect it doesn't matter that you don't have all of the skills yet because nobody has all of the skills <laughs> like sure there are experts out there but experts are learning still there is always something that you can learn that is new in the world and it's the learning which kind of keeps your brain alert isn't it and keeps you interested um, in life and and keeping moving forward in some way so yeah I think sharing your work is all about doing it for you um, doing it so that you have a record of what you've made and what you created and what stage you were when you did it what you were thinking, what you were feeling. It's kind of like a, a visual diary <laughs> of, um, of where your thoughts were at the time and what you were interested in. I think as soon as you put something out there, you kind of own it, you know? Um, and you say, well, this is it. This is what I've made. Uh, and you can l loathe it or like it, but um, it came from me. And it's something which was part of my journey, <laughs> um, my artistic adventure into, <laughs> into the future. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it. Sorry, I've lost my thread slightly because um, someone just came to the window and waved at me. <laughs> so I don't, I've kind of lost the thread of what I was saying because of that. Um, that that's the joy of, of uh, filming things or recording things in a garden shed. <laughs> it's that there is sometimes other people in the garden. <laughs> um, yes, so yeah, sharing your work, I think it's a good thing to do even if you are not certain or um, not confident in it because I think you find confidence after you've shared it weirdly um, I suppose you need a, a little bit of a, uh, a gumption moment where you have that little moment of okay I'm going to do it. I'm going to push the button. I'm going to publish this and put it somewhere. Um, and you can overthink things uh, to uh, the nth degree, as they say, because you can think to yourself, oh, but if I put stuff out there, um, I want people to think that I'm an expert now. I want people to um, follow me now and know that I'm good at stuff. And, you know, you want to be where you want to be immediately <laughs> um, and sometimes it's going to take a while you know uh, and perhaps we think but if we show people where we used to be or where we are now that they won't be interested in um, hanging around to to see where we end up um, because they won't be inspired by what we're doing but actually I think you have to start thinking of your work as valuable. You have, you have to start seeing what your art is as having some worth. And not all of the worth can be um, mixed into what the end result is. Like what the visual end product is. A lot of the worth in what you are creating, in any kind of creative, artistic creation, a lot of the worth is in how you made it. And yeah, the, the joy is in the process. Um, it's what you learnt along the way. Um, it's the choices that you made. Uh, and the more art you do and the more creative things you do the more problem solving you do art is 
just problem solving essentially um certainly creativity in all its forms is just problem solving you you see something and you want to make it you want to make it come alive and it's figuring out how to do that and how to say something in a way that seems true to you so yeah the the value in the art that you create is n is not small you know um and like i would i would look at say this piece of art and think to myself but it's so you know it's small it's just a little doodle it's um it doesn't necessarily you know it's it's not conceptual it doesn't say anything important on the surface of it um so why would anybody necessarily want to uh, see it and that's that's my inner voice then bringing that art into having a smaller worth um and i'm i'm seeing it as small i'm i see other artists as big and having a, a space in the artistic zone i suppose <laughs> Um, and not allowing that my art is part of that space. And there's no reason why I should think that, because no art is small art. All art has a value, but it's just whether or not you decide you want to start seeing that value and giving yourself permission to accept that your art has value even if you feel like it's only valuable to you because that is still worth it like you're the most important person in this art creation process <laughs> you really are you're the heart you're the beating soul of it um there would not be anything in existence uh, if you didn't try and make it and so it's important that yeah it's important that you recognize that there's a reason you're doing it that there's a reason hopefully that it's bringing you some kind of joy to do it and that that in itself is so worthwhile yeah i guess i guess that's all i'm saying um so here here we are at the at the end of this a little video um, and at this point I was trying very hard to um, just sort out some of the bits which had gone so wrong <laughs> in this little doodle. I, I especially loved adding these end bits. I will say um, I really enjoyed using these artful uh, watercolours. I thought they had some great colours in there, very pigmented um, and the brushes were lovely. I so enjoyed their delicate little tips that meant that I could do this kind of work, which you can't really see because my hand's in the way. Um, and also, oh, this end bit, look at this dreadful tape. <laughs> it's ripping this paper to shreds. And like every other thing that I've ever used this tape on has been absolutely fine. I have never had this issue of tape ripping the paper so I don't know what happened whether or not it's because it got a bit wet with the watercolour I don't know but this is the essence of an imperfect artwork is it not it's rich paper and um but it's still it's still mine it's still a lovely practice and it's time that I allowed myself to have to do something that was fulfilling Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps support the channel. And I hope to see you again next time. Bye.